yesterday and it was. Let's take you through the West in the order in which it happened. Steph and the Warriors visiting the Trailblazers. This one all Steph, all Warriors right from the get-go. Golden State. 55 points in the first Ooh, quarter please. and never looked back. Oh, Jonathan Kaminga. <laughs> he is in a postseason form. They win it big. They clinch the sixth seed. And we'll tell you in a moment why that was such a big deal. Meanwhile, LeBron James, Monica, and the Lakers, they get past the Jazz in one they needed. Yeah, Greeny, this one was a little tricky at points, but ultimately the King and Anthony Davis, they combine and lead his Lakers squads to a much needed win. You see LeBron here. This is a game right Right now, very much uh, still within the balance, mm -hmm. uh, but LeBron knocking it down until the Lakers when they clinch the seven seed. They will host Minnesota tomorrow night in a play-in game. And speaking of the Timberwolves, I'm not sure any team had a worse day than they did yesterday. Uh, watch Rudy Gobert and Kyle Anderson. We got a punch. Oh, in the, man. Uh, what, what, what is this all about, Monica? We'll talk about it in a second. Oh, watch this. That's, That's Jaden McDaniels. He's an incredibly important part of that team, a great defender in particular. He broke his hand. He's out for the playoffs. Anthony Edwards, meanwhile, would find a way to win this thing as he gets it back and puts it up and good. T-Wolves win. They get the eight seed, so they will face the Lakers. The Pelicans will be the nine. Here's where we stand in the West. Tomorrow night, Lakers and T-Wolves, that's for the seven seed. Winner of that series will get Memphis. Loser of that game will take on Pelicans Thunder, the winner of that for the eighth seed. And we already know the two first round matchups that are set will be Suns, Clippers, and Warriors and Kings. So that's where it falls out. Let me start with Wendy just quickly on the fallout from what happened with the Timberwolves, because now they got to turn around, they got to go to LA, they got to play LeBron and Anthony Davis tomorrow night. What is the situation with Jalen McDaniels, and what is the situation with Rudy Gobert? Well, Jaden McDaniels is going to be out indefinitely. No matter how long the Wolves run, he's probably done for the season. This is a huge factor for the Lakers because he is the primary defender on LeBron James. And just 10 days ago, Greeny, they played a very relevant game in Minneapolis. LeBron only went 7 of 19 shooting in that game, in large part because McDaniels was the primary defender, one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. That is obviously a huge factor in this game going forward. And then the Rudy Gobert situation is a little bit unknown. The players after the game yesterday clearly made it sound like they wanted to move past this and get into the, the frame of mind for the play-in trip. The team, however, was not committal as to whether Rudy Gobert will travel with, with the rest of his teammates to, to Los Angeles today. I would expect he would. Number one, he apologized to the team both privately and publicly yesterday. And secondly, their backup center, Nas Reed, recently suffered a season-ending injury. So they would be down to playing Carl Towns out of position or their third-string center situation. Not what you want in a play-in game, especially this is the guy you traded four first-round picks and a bunch of young players for. You got Rudy Gobert for these moments. So a very delicate situation that the Timberwolves are having to go into, and the Lakers get a home game and a team under some drama. McNutt, oh. what? I mean, how, <laughs> where, where do we even begin to unpack what was a, a dramatic and candidly horrendous yeah. final day there? And what chance do you give them tomorrow night in L.A.? Uh, they're on borrowed time as far as I'm concerned. As dynamic as Anthony Edwards was, and I loved him post-game talking with Leo B. Olsen just about wanting a chance and doing whatever he needed to do to help the T-Wolves get over the hump. These are teams that are legitimately trending in the opposite directions. The Lakers have one of the best records or the best record since the All-Star break at 15-7. and seven, And this is a Timberwolves squad that is limping into their postseason opportunity. I would have loved to see this T-Wolves squad healthy, Greeny. I think that they have some young players. They got some size. It could have been a really interesting matchup with the Lakers. But at this point, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, the way that they're playing and the way the T-Wolves look, it's a wrap. So this may have broken very well for the Lakers, all things considered. But still... You wind up in the play-in. That's not as good as having to play to get out of that round. And so if we look at the way all of yesterday played out, Wendy, who is the biggest winner in the West? Golden State Warriors. Uh, they get the sixth seed. We'll get the inexperienced uh, Phoenix Sun, uh, uh, Sacramento Kings starting uh, this weekend. Don't have to travel. They can take a bus to those games. At the start of the week, Greeny, we saw the Clippers, Lakers, and Warriors all unsure where they were going to go. One team was going to get the Suns in the first round. Not ideal. One team was going to have to go into the play-in. Not ideal. 
One team was going to get the sixth seed, get the Kings, who are formidable, but inexperienced and, and weaker defensively. That was the sweet spot. The Warriors hit it, and it came right down to it because the, 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 the Clippers and the Suns played a very tightly contested game yesterday, even though the Suns um, were not playing their regular players, came down to the final minute. The Clippers won, won, and get to go right back to Phoenix this weekend for game one on Sunday. And Paul George will not be available to start that series. The Clippers updated over the weekend that he is still without a timetable to return. So um, you, you don't take, you don't take uh, anything lightly with Kawhi Leonard, but certainly the Suns have an advantage not having to face the Warriors and getting a wounded Clippers team. And, and, and let's just consider where we are right now with Steph mm -hmm. and company with the Warriors. Mm -hmm. They get an opening run matchup with Sacramento without meaning to disrespect the Kings. That's the team everyone wanted. Mm -hmm. They also will avoid Denver, who's been the best team, and Phoenix, mm -hmm. who we all understand has been so dangerous, in that next round. So I'm not sure this thing could have broken any better than it did for the defending champs. Greeny, you know me. I, I want to get up here and say that the Kings are about to shock the world. I can't quite with confidence, but I do think that this series may not be as easy as folks think, right? I think that Mike Brown's relationship with the Warriors is a interesting wrinkle in this series in terms of his familiarity and helping to coach his guys up. Now, is Sacramento all of a sudden going to turn into a defensive juggernaut? No, but the Warriors have not been a defensive juggernaut, particularly on the road. This is an incredibly efficient and high-rated offense when you look at what the Kings do. And trust me, I hear Draymond Green when he says that the regular season doesn't matter, and I would have to defer to him on his knowledge. I just wonder if those supporting guys outside of Clay, Draymond, and Steph really understand and have the ability to maybe flip the switch that a Draymond has. Well, we're about to find out. The playoffs will begin for everyone else over the coming weekend. The play-ins are Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. We are back on a wild Monday here on Get Up. NBA regular season comes to an end yesterday. In case you missed it, here's what was settled. The Lakers finished seventh. They will host Minnesota tomorrow night in a West Conference play-in game. Winner is the seven seed. Loser goes on to a game on Friday. Warriors blew out Portland. Golden State wound up in the sixth spot. They'll take on Sacramento in the first round. Golden State won the regular season series. And the 4-5 matchup in the West will be the Clippers at the Suns. Despite being the four seed, the Suns are the favorites to win the West at plus 190. That series doesn't start until Sunday, so uh, we'll have to wait a little while to see them again. Brian Winhorst and Mana McNutt are here with us. Let me get a quick thing here for those who are looking ahead to that series, Clippers, Suns. Wendy, should we expect to see Paul George playing for L.A. at all in that series? Not at the start, definitely, Greeny. He was just given an update on Saturday with no timetable for return, and he did come to the Clippers game on Saturday was off crutches, but was still wearing a knee brace. So the hope for the Clippers is that they could advance in these playoffs either very late in this round, which would still be three weeks from now, or into the next round is a better chance for Paul George to return from that sprained knee. Yeah, I, it, let's underline the last thing Wendy just said. The series doesn't start until next Sunday. If it were to go seven games, the seventh game would be three weeks from yesterday. So there's a lot of time for Paul George. That said, I just mentioned, Monica, uh, Las Vegas thinks that Phoenix is the favorite to win the West. Do you? Oh, God. <laughs> Greedy, this is a year where nobody has really wanted to separate themselves truly. Uh, as I look at it right now, it's tough not to think that the Warriors have a conceivable path. But mm. I understand why people are leaning in on Phoenix. Here's the deal, though, for me with Phoenix. We only got to see a short glimpse of what it all looked like. And while it looked glorious in a very small sample size, can they maintain that level of efficiency in a playoff schedule, right? Where these games are going to come quick and they're practically back-to-back, -back, although they're not night, night in and night out. I understand why Vegas is there. I do think I would lean Phoenix right now being the favorite, but I think the Warriors are out there. And before this series, how about it? I mean, Kawhi has shown he can put a team on his shoulders. Can the Clippers bounce them in round one? I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen. Not without a healthy Paul George. It would require mercenary Toronto Raptors Kawhi Leonard to do that, and I just don't know that around him is a supporting cast that has that, uh, has that level of experience. You had a Kyle Lowry on that roster that had been deep in the playoffs prior. That, that's right. And, Wendy, quickly, the same to you as I want to get on to some other things here, but I mentioned Vegas says the Suns are the favorites in the West. Are they your favorite to win the Western Conference? 
You know, I like the Warriors at full power, but I would say with Phoenix, the best chance you're going to have is to get to them early because their disadvantage is continuity, and the team that they're getting out of the gates is a team that's wounded. So I respect the Clippers in their depth, but I think they drew a break by the Clippers uh, winning yesterday, which is how the Suns played it. They played to lose yesterday, so they avoided the Warriors in the first round, and that could right there, that little turn could end up deciding how the Western Conference playoffs play out. Yeah, and again, it's worth pointing out, they have a whole week here, which by their standards is an eternity of practice time and more to start, you know, continue integrating Kevin Durant into their lineup. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.